What's going on guys, Extremist Models here. Welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we will be going over my current model build collection from start to where we are right now with our current build. I will also be going over my current stash of models that are still waiting to be built. And I'll also highlight a couple other things like the display case and my work area and just a couple other things like that. So without further ado guys, let's get right into today's video. All right, so let's get started on this. Um, and before we get into the planes and stuff like that, we're gonna start off with the display case. Uh, I get a lot of questions about this display case and where I got it. Um, I ordered this from a company called Dawson Jones Store Fixtures. Uh, they're located in Georgia and they got some really awesome display cases. A lot of you guys probably already have this from another manufacturer, another company. Um, it's all really thick tempered glass, really excellent build quality. Um, everything went together really well. I think I paid right around probably 550, 600 bucks for this thing. Uh, they ship through a company called Central Freight Lines. And they're also a really good shipping company to deal with. So if you guys are on the market for a display case, and again, I'm not being sponsored or paid to, to talk about these guys or anything like that, uh, definitely hit these guys up. I would choose them over Ikea any day of the week. So with that out of the way, we'll go right ahead and get into the planes and stuff like that. So uh, my first model plane getting back into modeling i used to do model cars when i was a kid and i had never done planes before even though i've always been a huge plane fan um my first model plane back was this guy right here and i'm sure you all know what this is this is a testers 148 scale sr71 i've got it specced as an a model um and I had no experience doing any kind of airbrushing or anything like that before I started. So a lot of you guys will see stuff wrong with it. Like I had no idea right there uh, what silvering was in a model because I put these de <laughs> I put these decals on after the dull coat. I didn't put a clear coat down before. Um, and that's why that turned out the way that it did. Uh, overall though, I'm really proud of it. It's one of my favorite models in the display case because it sort of marked the beginning for me. It was the start of me doing something that I absolutely love doing. And uh, yeah, there's that one. Uh, the second model that I moved on to was this 148 scale Tamiya F117A Nighthawk. Um, this was probably the easiest kit that I've ever built. Um, just because there wasn't a sur real big surplus of parts. It went together really, really smooth as you would expect to me a kits to go together. Um, painting still, I hadn't figured out about silvering. But because this was finished in a semi-gloss color, there's really no, uh, there's really no silvering with these decals. But uh, overall, I like it. I think it turned out pretty awesome. It looks good. Uh, would definitely recommend the kit. On to the third model that I built was this Hobby Boss YF23. Um, this is a 48 scale. Again, it's pretty much just about all I build. Uh, fun fact about this kit: it comes with some weird made up tail numbers and stuff like that for a uh, a jet stationed at Langley Air Force Base of Virginia I think it is and uh, the insignias and other things that go on the kits decals are really horrible they're gibberish and you can't read them and they're uh, they're terrible they're just absolutely <laughs> terrible so I went through Caracal models got the decals for this plane and uh, replicated PAV-1 by watching another one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Max Afterburner. 
a great channel if you guys get a chance please go check him out and uh, yeah that's uh, my replica of PAV1 the fourth model that I built I wanted to uh, really kind of go crazy with is uh, this next Hobby Boss YF23 Black Widow and I know a lot of you guys are probably thinking why did you go so crazy on the pre-shade? Well, part of that was because at the time I was just experimenting and I just sort of fell in love with the way pre-shade lines look when you can see them through the top coat. And I wanted to have a very odd uh, camouflage kind of looking color like, you know, Raptors and F-15s and F-35s and other jets are also known for having their own uh, their own special camouflage and stuff like that so that's pretty much what I decided to go with for this plane uh, is my idea of what this plane would have looked like had it actually made it into service except for not well you can see them but there are missiles strapped to the bottom of the jet there are four uh, sidewinders and I have four amrams under there as well that are all mounted together uh, but yeah definitely one of my favorite jets that I've built really clean in its external appearance I think and uh, yeah that's pretty much it we'll move on to jet number five which was a kit that I saved from eBay um, this kit had already been partially put together but it is in fact another testers 148 scale SR 71 Blackbird again this is finished in an A model um, I did closed landing gear uh, just to get it in flight um, took about two days to do this from start to finish because I didn't really overly detail the cockpit because I wanted to hang it from my son's ceiling and uh, I didn't go real crazy on a lot of the details with it uh, just pretty much threw it together and got it painted and decaled and all that fun stuff the next kit that I built which I don't know the the people that I talk to about this kit sort of are a mixed batch. Uh, this is Kitty Hawk's 148th scale F-35 Lightning. And I'm not going to lie to you guys, I really hated this kit. I felt like the plastic was extremely brittle. Um, a lot of the smaller parts broke. The parts that make up the landing gear base uh, ended up breaking before I ever really got them completely assembled. So I decided with this kit to go gear base closed in flight. Um, and it's just a crying shame too because I thought that the, the finish was really awesome. I love how the paint turned out for this plane even though I didn't, uh, I didn't mask the, uh, the ram panels like most people do with these. But I, uh, I got it painted up. The decals went on pretty good. Uh, overall, aside from the crappy plastic, I'm I'm pretty content and happy with with how this plane turned out. So uh, we'll get back to the display case. All right, guys. So the next build was this Revel 148 scale Blue Angels F18 Hornet. This is just a normal Hornet. As you know, the Blue Angels don't fly Super Hornets, or at least not yet. A lot of people shun this kit. A lot of people don't like it. I, for one, love it. I think it was a great kit to put together despite the fact that there is a crap load of flash on this kit from the factory um, that you have to trim off with an X-Acto blade or snippers or just whatever you can use to shave it off there with. Um, definitely a good kit i kind of wish that the stripe down the the back of the fuselage i would have painted like the rest of the jet but uh yeah it, it is what it is um 
looking back, you know, like I said, I wish I would have painted it because it would have looked a little bit better, but all in all, I'm happy with it. The kit went together pretty nice for an old Revel kit. And uh, I can't complain with, with how that turned out. So the next plane on the list is a bit of a funny one. Uh, this was built for my wife as a gift. Um, she loves the Corsair. And this is Hasegawa's F4U Corsair Eggplane. Uh, I didn't decal this the way the kit says to. I don't know how well you can see it. But uh, I didn't decal it the way the kit says to. I kind of just did my own thing with it. Uh, I like how it turned out. You can't tell right now, but on the port side of the fuselage half, I have my wife's initials right below the... Uh, the canopy glass is a sort of a Easter egg in itself. So there's that one. Let's see which one was next. Ah, okay. This guy back here. <laughs> Again, another Tester's 148th scale Blackbird. This time I went with a B model variant. And this one's got all the bells and whistles. I did all of the decals on this one. Um, the bad thing about these old testers blackbirds is these decals are horrible. Um, I'm sure they wasn't like this when the plane was brand new out of the box. But for, you know, after sitting for so many years, the decals dry and they crack when you apply them. Um, but I managed, you know, I managed to get them all down and get them to seal with Microsol and Microset. And I'm really, uh... I'm really happy with how it turned out. I went with a little bit different finish on my B model than I went with on the A model. The A model's got a little bit more of a an older looking finish to it where it looks like it's been used whereas the the B model's got more of a, uh, a fresh sort of out of the hanger for the first time look. So, all right, on to the next build was this Hobby Boss 148th scale SU-30 MKK. Now this is the Chinese export variant. Um, really had fun with this kit. It was one of the easiest kits that I built. Um, learned a lot about how to get metallic surface finishes with the exhaust nozzles back there. Uh, mixing in the blues and the browns and the silvers and other other colors to get it look to look like it's burnt and wore out. Um, had fun with the ordnance on this plane because it is, as you can tell, it is extremely ready to go head to head in an air superiority belt loaded to the gills. Um, the next build was this 148th scale Tamiya F4U Corsair. As you can see, I got it down here with the egg plane. Um, this was another really easy kit. Had a lot of fun with it. Learned how to do some chipping techniques with a sponge on this one. Um, I made a couple mistakes. As you can see, the clear coat is cracked, and I mean really bad on this plane. And that's because I overcoated my first clear coat. But at the same time, I kind of like it because it gives it that old war torn sort of look. Like it's been to hell and back and just uh, extremely wore out. I uh, enjoyed building that one. The next one was this 148 scale testers V22 Osprey. My son absolutely loves this thing. Uh, I think it's one of his favorite aircraft. Um, whatever you want to call it. Plane, helicopter, hybrid. Uh, I knew with this one, because the variant that testers replicated to make this model was a pre technically a pre-production variant of the V-22 Osprey, I decided to do my own thing with the paint. So it is finished in Tamiya Olive Drab heavy pre-shade um, yeah it's full um, 
full interior spec, everything's done all the way out the back of the, the, the plane. Helicopter, whatever you want to call it. Had a lot of fun with this build. Um, wasn't really sure about the yellowish windows at first, but now seeing them against that olive drab, I really, really love it. I think it turned out good. I did my best uh, on this. I was learning how to use putties and fillers and stuff like that. <laughs> and I, uh, I didn't really do the greatest on it, but it's, uh, it's still one of my favorites. I really enjoyed building it. Next up, we have this A10 Warthog by Tamiya. Again, this is a 148 scale. Um, this kit was good. It definitely wasn't the greatest. Um, by this point, you can see I'd done started working on some panel line stuff and learning how to fill seams and get the right uh, fit and finish on all the parts. Uh, and it is my still my most heavily armed aircraft. It's got the uh, the Mavericks under there, the other bombs. I can't remember what they're called. Um, got what I believe I think that's a JDAM. But yeah, uh, the Avenger turret is actually photo etch. There's some other goodies on this kit as well. Overall, I'm really happy with this one. It's not up to standards with current Tamiya products as this one was built in, I think, 1991, I think it was manufactured. But uh, all in all, I'm really happy with how it turned out. I got to go crazy with the weathering on this one, which is something that you see quite commonly with A-10 Warthogs that are out in the field. I uh, got to really go crazy on it. And uh, yeah, it's just another one of those kits I love how it turned out. Next up, we have the Italeri F-22 Raptor. Um, this kit was, it was okay. Um, definitely not my favorite kit, not my favorite finish that I've done. But I think it turned out all right. Um, the problem with this particular Raptor kit is the upper fuselage half is actually separated into two pieces. And you have to get rid of a pretty substantial seam across the upper side of the fuselage half across the backbone of the plane. And uh, if you don't do it just right, you're still going to be able to see it. And even if you can't see the seam, the top of the fuselage halves are going to be shaped a little wonky. I don't know how well you're going to be able to see it, but you can still... <laughs> like I said, I was just still trying to figure out how to how to work out seam lines but you can still see it starting about right there um, I use the mask that most people used with the Hasagawa kit for my camouflage pattern it was a mixture of grays with a little bit of blue uh, my first display base build this is a Skymark's large display stand you can get these on eBay they're not too terribly expensive but uh they're definitely worth having as it's a uh, it's definitely a lifesaver uh, makes the model look pretty cool you do have to drill into it which sucks but yeah that's uh that's that one um, next build was the blackbird eggplane again not a lot going on here uh it's just an eggplane uh fun kit to build my wife told me that seeing as how i bought the corsair eggplane I had to have the uh, I had to have the Blackbird in there too. You know, I'm not going to build an eggplane. Her favorite eggplane, and not build mine in an eggplane too. So, yeah, uh, fun build. I know I keep saying that on all these. They're all fun builds, but uh, yeah, it looks kind of cute next to its larger, more realistic brothers up top here. Uh, the next build is the Testers 148 scale U2C spy plane. Um, good kit all in all but because it's so old it lacked a lot of current details and stuff like that don't even bother if you get this kit don't even bother trying to use the factory decals because they are going to fall apart the second you put them in water so i had to order decals from i believe it was caracal and i had to custom make the tail number that was originally on this kit fortunately the the caracal kit had everything that I needed to make the uh, 
the original number, which is tail number 66741. And uh, I also decided to go with the external fuel tanks, which is something that is not common to see on a U2C model from what I understood when I was building it. Um, project number 17 is one of my two or three favorites that I've built so far. Um, this is another Tester's 148 scale SR71 Blackbird finished in an A model. And this time I decided to go with AK Extreme Metalizers and I went with their titanium finish on this. And I also highlighted the composite materials along the fuselage and the engine nacelles and wings and stuff like that all over this jet. Um, it was my first time using metalizers by AK and I cannot tell you how proud of this jet I am. Uh, I got all the seam lines filled. Uh, the engines, the exhaust nozzles and all that. I can't quite remember the company that I got those from, but they're available on eBay for like 60 or 70 bucks or something like that. And they're very nicely put together exhaust setup as you can see. Uh, the rivet detail and the panel lines and the exhaust nozzle versus the I don't know how well you can see it. The factory options that you get with the testers kit. But all in all, this is probably my second favorite model in the entire display case. And I absolutely, absolutely love how it turned out. Couldn't be any prouder of it. Up next, first time doing a piece of armor. This is a 135th scale Tamiya M1 Abrams Tusk II. This is the SEP variant. Um, with the armor plating. Again, it's one of my top three favorites. Uh, first time doing armor and I absolutely love it. There's not, really not a lot I can say about it besides the fact that Tamiya really knows how to make some baller kits and uh, these guys are, the, there's a reason why Tamiya, to, my, to me, why Tamiya is the best at what they do. Their fitment is pretty much unmatched by anybody I've used so far. Maybe Hobby Boss comes close, but Tamiya is absolutely great. Um, the next up, the next one up on the list, uh, this is a Hypersonic Models uh, AG330 start cart. Um, as you know, the AG330 was used to start the SR71 Blackbird. Um, this kit was easy, easy, easy to put together. It took about two days uh, with the photo etch and other things. This one's finished in the Buick variant used to fire up the SR70, or no, excuse me. This one is finished in the Chevy variant to 454 big block Chevrolet engines in the start cart used to turn over one of the SR71's massive J58 Pratt & Whitney turbo ramjet engines. It was uh, an awesome kit, hypersonic models. Check them out if you're on the market for SR71 Blackbird related model products. Uh, great kit. And next up, easily my favorite model I've built so far in the display case. This is Tamiya's F14D Tomcat, and this is finished in the Bounty Hunter's livery. Uh, absolutely just the best fitment I could have ever asked for. This jet gave me no problems. Everything fit perfectly. And when I say everything, I mean 100% of the parts went on perfectly. Not 99%, 100% of these parts went on perfect. Uh, the jet was easy to build. The paint came out great. Uh, really got to go crazy with the weathering because as you know, these jets lived their lives. If they wasn't in the air, they were exposed to salt air on the decks of aircraft carriers. So I got to really go crazy with dirtying this guy up. Uh, it's armed with sparrows, sidewinders, and there are four AIM 54C Phoenixes under there. The kit only has two Phoenixes in it, 
I had to order extra sprue kits out of an A model on eBay for like six or seven bucks. And that was uh, what I used to finish up the jet. And like I said, it's my favorite one in the whole display case in terms of fit and finish. And uh, yeah, I'm really happy with how it turned out. And the last kit, the one that I just finished up yesterday, is this Tester's F-19. This is the Stealth Fighter. Um, I have heard that this is the best selling kit of all time. It is a 148th scale. This is not a real plane. It's a kit that testers themselves came up with. Uh, this was, this kit predates the reveal of the F-117 Nighthawk. Uh, all we really knew is that there was going to be a stealth jet at some point. So a lot of companies went ahead and pulled the plug on what they thought the stealth fighter was going to look like. Uh, I heard rumors that a lot of companies, including testers and monogram, were actually kind of disappointed that this came out the way that it did compared to their designs, which monogram has their own F-19, and I also have one of those in my stash. You, you guys will see later. Um, and then after a while, this sort of caught on, and everybody just sort of fell in love with it because, I mean, look at it. <laughs> the F-9, or the F-117 is a badass plane. But, uh, yeah, I finished this. It's a hundred, well, not a hundred percent custom, but for those of you who know this kit and have built it, you will notice that a lot of things on it are different. Uh, it's got a scratch-built nose cone, um, complete panel line scribe. Uh, I wanted to build this as a Mach 5 capable jet, so it is, uh, it's turbo ramjet. Those spikes at the end of the engine intake nozzles right there I've designed to move forwards and backwards. Um, it has a 100% scratch build built custom exhaust nozzle. The vertical tails have been canted further upwards. You could see where they would have originally laid down on the side of the fuselage. Canted them further upwards. I cropped the wing tips because I didn't like the rounded edges. I just didn't like the way it looked. The plane is also finished with black landing gear and black landing gear bays. Um, and it has F-35A decals from Caracal on it. And this plane is based at Eglin, I think it's Eglin Air Force Base in Florida. And it is tail number 18. 001 denoting what would be the very first of these jets in a series but uh yeah that is the current model build collection uh we'll get moved on to the stash all right so on to the current stash uh, i'm not going to go into too much detail on these uh, the video pretty much speaks for itself as you can see uh, Starting out on this bottom corner. We have Revels 148th scale B1B Lancer Platinum Edition uh, Can't wait to get started on this kit um, To my knowledge aside from the brand new HPH models B52 After that one, this is the largest 148th scale jet you can get uh, definitely looking forward to, to that um, we have a Hasegawa 148th scale F-22 Raptor in the stash along with the 148th scale Ming F-35A uh, after the Hobby Boss kit I decided I still wanted a Raptor or not a Raptor excuse me a Lightning in my display case but I wanted it to be something other than Kitty Hawk up next, we have the 148th scale Monogram F5 Tiger. Uh, older kit, from what I can tell, it's going to be really easy to assemble as it's uh, actually really small. Two more 148th scale Hobby Boss YF23s. We've got a 148th scale Rebel F15E Strike Eagle. Um, 148th scale F15C. Eagle. Uh, this is the air superiority variant and a 148th scale Rebel F-18 Super Hornet. Uh, again, 
going to be some fun builds. Can't wait to start on the F-15s and uh, see how those go. Um, these two have nothing to do with the, the channel right now as these are being built for uh, a friend of mine. Um, going to be mixing some things off both cars to create one really, really wicked Boss 302. We've got our 148th scale C-130J Hercules, um, another gigantic kit. Like the video, when I finally do the build series on this plane, it's just not going to do it justice. Unless you've previously built this, the video is not going to do it justice just how large this thing is. 148th scale Rebel A-10 Warthog. Uh, from what I can tell, it's not the greatest kit in terms of quality, but uh, definitely looking forward to seeing what we can do with it. Hopefully it turns out something close to the Tamiya kit. Not really sure just yet, but we'll get into it. We have a 148 scale Rebel F4C Phantom II, um, another legendary plane. Can't wait to start that one. I have another F-19 Stealth Fighter in the stash. Uh, I'll be doing completely stock on this one. It will not be modified in any way. Um, this is completely custom as you guys seen earlier. And we have Monogram's variant of the F-19 Stealth Fighter. Uh, it looks entire, <laughs> entirely different. It's got more of the G.I. Joe kind of look. But uh, we'll be doing that kit too. Should be pretty interesting. We have ICM's 148th scale B26B Invader. Um, I bought this uh, based on the fit and finish from my favorite modeler's YouTube channel. He also built one of these. Prime Model Works built one of these and it turned out absolutely awesome and uh, it turned me on to the kit and I can't wait to get started on it. It's going to be a fun, fun project. And we're up to a couple of 172nd scale planes from Hobby Boss, the SU-47 Burkett and another F-5E Tiger, both of which like I said are 72nd scale jets. We've got a 148th scale Messerschmitt BF-109 K-4 from Fujimi. Uh, gonna be a fun kit also. Um, looking eventually to maybe get a smaller display case. Uh, one of the, like a, I don't know, like a 12 by 12 to 15 by 15 to put my World War II based aircraft in. And uh, that will definitely be a fun kit to see inside the cab. Uh, we've got Rebels 148 scale P51D. Um, this is going to be a good kit. From what I noticed, it has raised panel lines. I could be wrong, but I think I saw raised panel lines. If so, we'll probably scribe the entire model. Um, don't really know if I'm sure about the decals with this kit. And I'll probably end up going with other ones. But uh, it'll be in the World War II collection also. And then this up here is just a... Uh, Hasegawa weapon set for a modern uh, 148th scale aircraft. But yeah, that's pretty much going to do it for the stash. Uh, we'll get moved on to my work area and the current current builds. So this is my work area. This is where I build and paint my models at. Um, as you can see, I've got my paints and my brushes and stuff like that over here on this side. Uh, just some assorted things like clear coats, decal setting solutions, glues, um, pipettes, just some assorted files and things up here. My CAs, um, cotton swabs, and all of my uh, all of my wash materials. And, Putties. As you can see, I keep a lot of notes on how to do things. I find that it 
really helps out when you're not forgetting what it is you're supposed to be doing or how to do something. Um, got a box of assorted tools that I use, things like that. I've got my cutting mats, um, airbrushes, hose. I have three Awada Neo airbrushes. I love them. Really good brushes. Um, they work really well and they put the paint down nice. I'm a really big fan of Tamiya products. I really love them. Uh, it's my favorite paint to use on my models. Uh, it goes down really nicely. I like the coats. It's strong and it looks good. It's easy to work with also. Got some Mr. Surfacer products that I just picked up. Haven't got to try these out yet. The same with these MRP paints. Have yet to get to try these out. By the time I got this in, this particular color, as you can see on my MIG project here, I had already mixed the custom Russian cockpit turquoise out of Tamiya colors and I think I did okay. Looks pretty close. But we've got that. I've got my collection of AK Extreme metalizers. These are my favorite metalizers. I absolutely love them. The 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 shine that you get back from these are really awesome if you base coat them correctly. They have to have a gloss undercoat for them to work correctly. Um, and for that I usually use Steinol or some kind of Steinol res, whether it's uh, whether it's the gray or the black, it puts down a nice enough sheen that uh, they go down really nicely. On to my current projects. Actually, we'll start here. This is a Revel 148th scale Blue Angels F18 that I had left over that is actually missing a lot of parts. And this is what I use as my, my paint mule, my sort of test dummy for figuring out new color codes and pre-shade techniques. And, you know, it's served its purpose pretty well. It's got a lot of coverage on it right now. You can't really tell that it's had much going on but I've done a lot of practice work on this when I was doing the sponge technique for the um, for the walkways on the f14 Tomcat that I just finished I don't know if you could see it too well but on the wings I masked off sections and actually used the sponge technique on this guy first because I didn't want to mess up the f14's paint I wanted to make sure that I knew how to do it first, but yeah, this is my paint dummy, paint mule, test paint thing, whatever you want to call it. Um, yeah, this is a 172nd scale C130J that I'm building for a friend of mine. Nothing really to see right now. Um, the cockpit area is completed. I didn't do anything on the inside as the back of the plane is closed up. You're not going to be able to see any of that stuff anyway. But there's a really nasty seam across the top of this thing that I've got to seal. And I want to try to use the uh, CA and gunmetal pigment trick that uh, we're all learning how to do from Prime Model Works. So... I'm going to give that a try and see if it's going to be capable of filling in that same line. I don't I don't see a problem with it. If it if it doesn't work and it bleeds through, it's not really going to be a big deal cuz you're not going to see the area that it's going to bleed through anyway and I'll just fill it with putties. This is my current project. It is a Revel Ice it's technically an ICM rebox, but it is the Revel 148th scale MIG 25 RBT. This is a Fox Bat. And we are right now almost ready to start primer on this. The seam lines have all been filled. Everything's lined up nicely. It went together really good. The exhaust is all masked off with foam. I'm going to get that painted. And uh, 
As soon as I get the interior section of the canopy glass painted, the Russian turquoise or Russian cockpit turquoise, I can put it on, close everything up, and start getting it primed. And this up there, that's where I dry all of my wet paint and stuff like that. It it was a fairly inexpensive uh, piece of equipment to get. This is technically a two shelf greenhouse that I got on Amazon, and uh, it serves its purpose really nicely. It's just got metal racks across the top, and usually I have a third shelf hanging down from this from a old uh, USPS priority mailbox looking thing. But uh, yeah, it does really good at keeping dust out and stuff like that. When you need to get in it, you just unzip the sides and reach in there and grab your part and bring it back down here. And of course, when I paint, I hook up my paint booth and stuff like that. But uh, yeah, it serves its purpose pretty well. But that is the Extremis Models work area. I know it isn't anything fantastic or great, but it works. And yeah, that's going to do it for my work area. Okay, guys, that's going to wrap it up for today's video. I appreciate you all sticking around, even though this video is ridiculously long. Um, didn't plan on it being this long, but uh, kind of got carried away <laughs> with a couple of things. Uh, feel free to subscribe, turn on notifications so that you are the first to be notified of all of my new content coming. Uh, feel free to like, comment, ask questions, and uh, I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Take care.